Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Report. And before I get into my overreaction Monday after a big time 23-20 victory, I got to give some love to today's sponsor, Panda Subs. To everyone who was like, Mitch, were you hung over this morning? Yes. Luckily, I took a scoop of some BCAs from Panda Subs, and I got back on track a little bit. Now, if anybody out there needs some new workout supplements, head on over to pandasups.com. Use code PLAYOFFS for 35% off. Now, here's what's going to be coming up here on today's show. I got four Big time overreactions after the Raiders week 17 win. We're going to look at the NFL playoff picture and then the Raiders versus Chargers week 18 game. Now the very first overreaction that's going to be coming up here on the show. Well, actually, I'm going to tell you this. I want you guys to subscribe to the Raiders report. Why? Sub for Raiders dubs. Just sub, baby. We hit over 102,000. It was live and electric. Over 100,000 people were watching yesterday's show. I had a lot of good times, and I guess that makes sense. Either way, though, subscribe for Raiders dubs. Now, here's going to be the very first overreaction coming up here on today's show. Was this the best defensive game that the Raiders played the entire season? Now, I get it. It wasn't the most or least amount of points that they allowed, but when you really look at this game from start, to finish, the fact that total yards, 262, passing yards, 140, rush yards sure is 122, but that was going up against the best running back in the National Football League right now, Jonathan Taylor, up against the best rushing attack in all the football, and this 140 passing yards, that honestly doesn't tell the entire story because I was really impressed the way that this entire team played, minus the final drive of right before the first half. I don't know what Gus Bradley was doing there, but besides that, this team played themselves one heck of a game, and also the T.Y. touchdown in the third quarter. That was an absolute joke. So give me your thoughts here because this is what the Raiders report's about. It's about you guys going down in the comments. It's about us having a two-way conversation, and I am going to see what you guys end up typing. So was this the Raiders' best defensive game of the season? Type Y for yes, or I want you to go ahead and type no. All right, coming up now, we got some Carson Wentz stats. Yeah, 16-27, 148 yards, one touchdown, zero picks. But realistically, there was a point where he was one of eight for seven yards before that final drive that I kind of mentioned right before half. He just couldn't really get anything going. The one touchdown was on a very fluky play that... Honestly, it should have been an interception, but because of miscommunication, it lands right in the lap of T.Y. Hilton. So this was the biggest reason why the Raiders won that game. But then you also, sure, you're going to look at these Jonathan Taylor stats. You're like, well, Mitch, he averaged 5.4 yards per carry. Taylor's basically been doing that the entire year, and he didn't really break off any major, major runs. Now, he had two back-to-back -back runs, one for 18, one for 24. When that happened, I got really nervous because I was like, oh, man, here we go. Taylor's about to get it going. And then shout-out to Bradley. Shout-out to the defensive front. They showed up, and they continue to make life very difficult for Taylor. But for those of you that don't understand like how impressive this Raiders win was, Indy was probably playing some of the best football in the entire league. They started the year out 0-3. They were 2-4, and and then they're 9-6 and entering that game. You know that whole stat that Derek Carr and the Raiders are undefeated when he throws for over 300? Well, guess what? The Colts were undefeated 6-0 and when Jonathan Taylor rushed for over 100 yards, and yet they still did not win the game. So I know we always talk about offense on the show because – that's what the media talks about, and I got to do my part to not only talk about news, not only talk about the top trending topics, but we got to give some love to this defense. The defense was phenomenal last week. They might have been even better this week, so I want you to go to down in those comments right now and let me know who was the defensive MVP for Indianapolis. When I think about my defensive MVPs, I realistically, realistically have five names. Divine Diablo, the rookie. This dude continues to get better and better. He led the team with nine tackles. And realistically, since he has been on the field, him and Denzel Perrin have been a dynamic run-stopping duo. And I mean, you want to talk about the top linebackers on next year's roster? Here you go. Perriman, Divine Diablo, sorry, Corey Littleton, you're the third best at the absolute best. Unique Gakwe, he had four quarterback hits. One of the biggest reasons why Went struggled. Now, sure, Gakwe wasn't really able to contribute too much more than a few QB hits. He did have a sack, but he had a phenomenal game. Darius Phylon had eight tackles, really stopping the run. And then Casey Hayward, he made a few really, really clutch stops these are my five defensive MVPs if you guys thought I forgot anyone please let me know I'm gonna be looking let's go to the next overreaction because when I woke up this morning I went on Twitter which sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad I know what I know what it's like to work in this business and I saw an article there that the Raiders are winning 
despite Derek Carr, which I'm definitely not afraid to rip on DC. I'm also not afraid to give some Carr some love. So when you look at some of these numbers that he had yesterday up against Indy, 24-31, 255 yards, a touchdown, and then two interceptions. So here's my question to all of you. Are the Raiders winning right now despite Derek Carr? I want you to go ahead and type B for Believe It Baby. For those of you new watchers, that basically means yes. Or you can go ahead and type T for Tuck That. And I can understand, and if you want to send me full screen chugs so I can make my point, I can understand the frustration when you see the two interceptions. The first interception wasn't an underthrown football to Deshaun Jackson. Yes, it absolutely was. But how long have I, how long have so many people been complaining that instead of just doing a dink and dunk play, take a shot deep. That's what the Raiders did. They took a shot deep. It ended up getting intercepted, and then so be it. But not nearly enough of people are talking about the fact that Carr did not have Derek or Darren Waller in this game. They've had so many injuries. They've had a lot of stuff going on in the offensive line. This was not a great game by D.C. by any standards. However, I don't really think that the Raiders are winning despite Carr, though I would be nervous if I was an NFL team because if this team makes the playoffs and Carr gets it rolling and gets some healthier pieces back with the way that they've started to run the football and the way the defense has played, yeah, I'd be a little bit worried. But when you look at the entire spectrum of this season, a lot of people are holding Derek Carr to a very high value because, let's face it, he's having a career year in terms of passing yards, and he has been. He's been very good being able to throw the football, 4,618 passing yards. Here's my point, though. Yards are okay statistic, but what I want are touchdowns. And then when you look at his touchdown and turnover ratio, it's basically one of the worst that he's had his entire career, which is why I'm still on the board, even if the Raiders make the playoffs, the best thing for this team is to ultimately move on from D.C. But also that being said, I do got to give some love to Carr because he is approaching Rich Gannon's single season record of most passing yards by a Raiders quarterback in a single year. Gannon, 4,689, did it in 2002. As you can see, Carr's no, uh, definitely not afraid to be on this list, and he needs only 72 more yards to do it. God forbid if he were to get injured, I don't see how there's any way in hell that Carr doesn't throw for 72 passing yards up against the Los Angeles Chargers. So I'm hoping that he chucks the ball around. I actually hope he throws for like 300 and what, 72 is at the math. That way he can get to 5,000. Now maybe, yeah, he also needs six touchdowns because I got to bet with Jeremy that he'd have more touchdowns than Jalen Hurts, but that one doesn't seem like that's ultimately possible. Now maybe he would throw six touchdowns if he took some extra protein or some supplements from Panda subs but anybody out there I get it it's the new year yeah I always say new year new me if you are trying to create a new version of yourself I personally recommend these panda subs supplements and now if you guys haven't already you can look in the comments you can look in the description it's pandasups.com use code playoff so I talked to the owner panda subs he is a big time Raiders fan I was like what do you think about the code playoffs he's like dude let's do it let's get it going so whether you're trying to take something for your pre-workout whether you want to take something that's going to help burn some fat if you need the BCA hydration that's what I took this morning because I'm not gonna lie I was a little bit hungover you guys kicked my butt but this is also great to take after your workout because believe it or not it's very important to fuel those muscles so if you have any questions about these awesome supplements please don't be afraid to hit me up but I promise you you're gonna love them I use them every day pandasups.com use code playoff to check out for 35 percent let's go to a guy who I know uses panda subs Hunter Renfro is he gonna break the Raiders single season record for most receptions I love this guy and I get it. Back in 2019, a lot of people are always like, oh, Max Crosby was the steal of draft. Max Crosby was the steal of draft. And I agree. He was the steal of draft. But sometimes we got to start giving some love here to Renfro, who is slowly approaching as maybe the second best pick in terms of overall value in the 2019 draft. He had nine targets yesterday, seven grabs, 76 uh, total or 76 reception, receiving yards. I'll get it together. One touchdown. He was also really clutch at special teams. He had a few really key punt returns, and he's also approaching a record of his own. Now, when you look at the single season reception record, it is owned by Darren Waller. He set it last season with 107 catches. But if you just want to talk about the reception record of just receivers, Tim Brown said it back in 1997. Now, I get it. The NFL is much different now. It's definitely more wide receiver friendly for receivers this year. Renfro has that extra game. But we have to put some respect on Hunter and everything he's been able to do this season. He's got 99 catches, and he needs nine more to go ahead and break the record. So I would be a bad host. I wouldn't be doing my job here at Chat Sports if I didn't ask you this question here. How many receptions will Renfro finish the season with? My initial projection was way off. Now, again, I didn't anticipate Waller missing the amount of games that he did. 
I also didn't uh, envision what happened to Henry Ruggs. So, like, it's really hard to make that projection early on. But when I really see this team, when they're moving, when they're rocking, I actually really hope that they try to get Renfro the reception record. I'm going to go ahead and say he's going to finish just short, but I would love to see my man do it. Here's going to be my last overreaction here on the Raiders report, and then we're going to get into the playoff picture. I'm going to look at the Raiders and Chargers game. Is Daniel Carlson the best kicker in the NFL? He made another game-winning field goal. You can tell that this team has a lot of confidence. Last week, Derek Carr was asked about Carlson, and Carr straight up was like, dude, when he's getting ready to go out there and kick it, I don't even watch because I know what's going in. So for, from an entire season standpoint, 35 of 38, 92.1 field goal percentage, 28 of 31, which I find a little bit funny that he's better at field goals made in hell. Even one of the field goals that he missed was a 29 chip shotter. But if the game's on the line, I have so much confidence in Carlson, who's got four game-winning field goals this year, including the one that he made yesterday. He was 3-3 three three yesterday. He had a long of 47. He made two extra points, and I understand that the Raiders gave him a contract extension. This is going to go down as one of those deals a few years from now. You're like, yeah, that's a really, really good deal. I don't think Carlson's the best kicker in the NFL because there's this guy named Justin Tucker. But he's definitely top five, and the Raiders, they got a real good one here. Now, if you guys haven't already, please hit me up on IG, MitchellRent365. I had friends, family members asking me, dude, you should know how to handle the DOS boot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I had to do two DOS boots on yesterday's Raiders Report show. The bubble is a real thing. It kicked my butt a little bit. So if you want to see a tipsy guy trying to do the, the, the beard what is it called? The DOS boot. You're right, Jeremy. I did not have the eye of the U, so there's no doubt about it. But if you guys want to check out the videos, if you need extra content, Raiders news, Raiders rumors, please hit me up on IG. All right, guys, let's look at the updated AFC playoff picture as it stands right now. And as you can see, this is before Monday Night Football when the Steelers go up against the Cleveland Browns. Now, tomorrow when I go live... I'm going to be doing a playoff projection or Raiders playoff chances video. So please stay tuned for that. And a lot of people are sitting here, wait a minute. How are the Raiders at 9-7 and seven, not in the wild card playoff picture when they just beat the Indianapolis Colts sitting there at 9-7? and seven? The reason is Colts, Chargers, Raiders all at 9-7. and seven. And then when you look at the record against common opponents, it goes advantage Indy, it goes advantage Chargers. Now here's the question. Will the Raiders make the playoffs? And I know a few weeks ago when I asked this, Raiders were 6-7. and seven. I was like, they basically need to win out. If the Raiders beat the Chargers, they are in the playoffs, 100%. So that could really come down to it. Now, tomorrow on my live show, I'm also going to be breaking down how the Raiders can make the playoffs if they lose to the Chargers. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But P for playoffs or... I want you to go ahead and type W for that they won't make it. Now, speaking of this Week 18 game, this was supposed to be a middle-of-the-afternoon type of game, but then the NFL was like, oh, shit, winner of this game, they get in the playoffs. So if the Chargers win, they're in. If the Raiders win, they're in. Both teams sitting here with a 9-7 and seven record, and they switched it to Sunday night football, which you guys know I'm going to be here doing a show. The Chargers are three-point favorites, which I'm actually okay with because at the end of the day, I really truly believe when this team has their back up against the wall, the Raiders are going to be able to show up. And I also hope that they're one of their most embarrassing losses that this team had this year was when they lost 28-14 to to the Chargers. They went down 21-0, and everyone was sitting there on Monday Night Football like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Now the over-under is set at 48.5, and, and again, Chargers three-point favorites. Now, I appreciate everyone that continues to watch the Raiders report, and I want you guys to tune in for Sunday Night Football. I'm going to be live here on the Raiders report. We're going to start at 8, 10 p.m. Eastern time. For those of you on the West Coast, 5, 10 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on those notifications because I'm going to need your help. The entire nation is going to need your help cheering on the Raiders to hopefully go into the playoffs this season.